Hello everyone, Sebastiano here of CodyHouse.com. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is for a designer to integrate interactive components using the CodyHouse UI framework. Now, when I say a designer, I mean someone with a good HTML and CSS knowledge, but with a very basic JavaScript knowledge. Anyway, let me show you an example. So I'm working on this uh, dashboard UI and I have this link to the notifications page. So I want to turn this link into a button which triggers the visibility of a popover right here with a list of the latest notifications. So how to do that? Let's go to the components page on codihouse.co and let's look for the popover component. Let's preview this component. When you click on the button, you can see uh, we toggle the visibility of this popover box here with a content which is fully customizable. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Let's integrate this component. Click on view code and then uh, let's create a new file, a new um, SCSS file for the style of this component. Let's copy the SCSS and let's paste it here. And then we are going to do the same for the JavaScript. Let's look for now in my project, I have inside the main JS folder another components folder when I can just paste, first of all, the name and then the JavaScript of this component. Okay. Now all what's left to do is copying the HTML. Let's go to the index page. Uh, let's go to the bottom of the document and uh, Let's paste the structure. Now, as you can see, we have a button, which is the element that controls the popover. And then we have the popover itself here. Now, just by looking at the code, even though we don't check the info page on uh, Cody House, which explains how to integrate this component, we can understand that uh, the link, the bridge, let's say, between the control and the popover is this element here, because it's the only element, let's say, other than the button classes that we have. So we can just uh, uh, copy this, and then we can get rid of the button. Now we can go and look for the notifications link, which is this one. And we want to, to turn this into a button. We were saying uh, before, so we can just replace the anchor tag with the button, remove the href attribute, and then add a way to uh, control the popover. Let's save and let's go back to our uh, dashboard UI. As you can see, there is uh, some strange border over here and that's because we are no longer using an anchor tag so we're using a button and buttons have some default style in uh, set by the browser so we just want to make sure to use a reset class now let's save and now as you can see the button is looking fine and when you click on this element the popover is right there so it was super easy to integrate this interactive element and you may be thinking okay so it's just a simple element there is nothing crazy going on here that's partially true but um, when you create this component for production you have to account for many cases that you may not uh, consider at first for example what if this button is on the left now you want in this case the popover to be uh, displayed to the right of the button what if the content of the popover is higher than the viewport height. Now you want to set in JavaScript the max height for this element so that the user can scroll through the content. So there is more stuff to take into account. For example, you want to move the focus into the popover for accessibility reason and so on. But when you just copy this stuff from Cody else, you don't have to deal with that stuff likely. So, Let's move on and let's uh, create the list of notification items. I have already included this component. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, there is already a static version on the notifications page, but we can look for the notifications component on Cody House, copy the HTML, go back to our project and change the content of the popover and then save. Now, if we check again, now you can see we have a list of notification items. So there is something else to do. As you can see, we have some issues. There is a padding here that um, we can remove. 
we can just look at the popover element. And as you can see, we have a padding small class that we can just get rid of. Okay. Now we want to make some other changes and the best approach in this case would be to create a notif um, popover component. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now, first of all, uh, this component, uh, its uh, as CSS uh, should be included after the CSS of the popover and that of the notification component. So if we check for these two components, you can see we have the popover here and then the notifications and they both have an index of one. So I'm just gonna create another component with an index of two, notif popover dot scss. Okay, so what uh, what needs uh, to be changed? So if we check for the, first of all, for the popover component, you can see we have a um, custom property uh, that uh, sets the width of this component. So we want to change this uh, um, for this uh, um, popover here, for the notification popover. So we can go, and in this case, we can target notif pop over and then we can change the width to something like uh, let's try 350 and now as you can see we have more room for our notifications uh, not just that M maybe we want to reduce the size of these uh, um, icons here so we can uh, go back to the notifications component here and if we check the CSS once again we have another uh, custom property so we can go back to our notif uh, popover component target in this case the notif and change the figure size to something like let's try 40 pixels let's go back and now as you can see the preview image is smaller Finally, we want to add the link to the notifications page and we can do that by creating a custom element right above the uh, notif uh, uh, component. We can add a header. Now in this header, we can just include an h1 element, notifications, and then a link to the notifications page. View all. Now let's save and check it out. And as you can see now we have a huge title which we have to modify and a view all link to the main notifications page. Now let's make some changes real quick. So first of all, we want to make the text smaller. We're gonna use the text MD class. Also, we want this element to be sticky on top. So just to account for uh, an edge case where we have a um, longer list of notifications uh, you can just copy the latest element here and duplicate it a few times so this is something i suggest you uh, you do uh, anytime you're building something new you have to account for the edge cases because they're gonna bite you back later on in uh, in your project now the header, uh, we want to set a uh, background color. We want to set a position of sticky. So I'm using right now Cody frame utility classes with a top of zero. And uh, let's also add a shadow uh, excess. Now let's save and let's go back. As you can see, here is our element. And when you uh, surf through the, um, the, the list of notifications, uh, this uh, header here is sticky. There is uh, clearly a Z, Z index problem that, that we're gonna fix right away. But as you can see, uh, the max height of this component is set uh, in JavaScript, uh, and uh, this rule is already there in the JavaScript of the popover component. Now, we have to make just the latest changes. So we want to make sure that the Z index of this element is at least uh, two, and then we want to we want to align horizontally oops, the H1 and the anchor tag. We can use the flex utility classes. So first of all, flex. Then you want the items aligned on the baseline. And then you want to 
move them away to the edges of the container and you can do that using the justify between utility class. So let me check again. Uh, as you can see, uh, well, it's starting to take shape. One last change will be adding a padding here. And I also want to try reducing the background opacity to something like opacity, something like, let's try 80% and let's add a blur effect. Um, this is another utility class backdrop blur 10. Let's save, let's go back. And we actually forgot to specify which kind of padding. Let's try padding uh, small. And uh, yeah, it's uh, perfectly aligned. We have the link as well. And then when you scroll through the elements, you can see that, uh, I don't know if it's visible uh, in, in this video to you, but there is some blur effect uh, just right below the uh, banner, the header banner, let's say. Okay, we are good to go. We have a new, a fresh new notifications uh, uh, pop over with a link to the notifications page. And we did it just in a few minutes using the Codehouse UI framework.